lately or since the very beginning is just I don't know how to end a book. I'm excited because I've been, I'm not going to show you too much, but over here <laughs> I've been like scribbling down everything um, that I've been having problems with. I also just watched this really great video by Lessons from the Screenplay. I love their channel. I highly recommend it. Um, I watched a, a few good men writing a final battle. I'll link it in the description below, but that kind of put into works how I need to start thinking about the ending and how the ending actually, like you hint at it from the very beginning. So there's all these ideas of stakes and rules and telling what the battleground is in order to have this final final like climactic ending and although I don't really think that the two characters in the end are going to like fight off but there does need to be stakes involved that was really helpful it got me thinking and then talking to my mom was really helpful I think just bouncing ideas off of somebody she gave me this one idea where I was like that's brilliant why did I think of it and it's because sometimes you get trapped in your own head and like you've already made grooves in how you think that the story should go that sometimes when you're on your own you don't explore other avenues so it's really good to bounce ideas off of other people it's uh, made some of the character interactions a little bit more definite I think it's an ending that I really I really like I'm, in, I'm excited about it it makes sense with all the character arcs that are coming into play so really big thing that we accomplished and yeah Hello, hello. So good afternoon, uh, good evening and good night. True moon reference. It is no longer the holidays. Sad as that is, it is true. But the good thing about that is now I feel like I'm back on a more regular schedule. So since I work half time, as I mentioned before, um, I'm really trying to implement my writing as if it was my other half time job. So um, working 20 hours per week on anything related to the book. I didn't get as much done as I wanted to yesterday, but I thought that since I actually feel awake, I'm not really groggy right now and I feel like my head can process notes, I thought I would do a little bit of research. Uh, I've been trying to study more on Filipino studies and Filipino history just because I feel like I want to incorporate all of that into my writing. And how can I do that without actually learning a little bit more? Um, so I'm gonna take some notes today. I've been putting off this one reading for like weeks on end and I just kind of want to get it done. So yeah, that's the big thing for today. So study with me, I guess? Let's study together. Let's get our like books out, our <laughs> stationery, my, my, my giant, can you tell I don't have enough stationery? This is so big. Um, but yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna study together. minutes and I don't know this is why I had to like study for so long is because it takes me a really long time to get through a paper because I like digesting it I like reading it I like mulling it over and kind of also talking about it scanning never does any good for me I think what was really interesting about today what I read and I'm still going through it but I'm reading white love and other events in Filipino history by Vin Vicente uh, L. Raphael. Apparently there is a difference between Filipino, Pilipi Filipino and Tagalog, which I never knew. Okay, so I think the difference is 
Filipino is based on Tagalog, English, and some Spanish. Um, but Tagalog existed before Spanish missionaries came to the Philippines. But Tagalog was actually reduced to uh, the Roman alphabet, so A, B, C, D, and so forth, by the Spanish when Spanish missionaries came and colonized the Philippines. It has a history of being coded as a classical and old language versus it's still used today as a means of mass communication to popular audiences. That was a really big difference that I did not realize until today, so it it's nice learning about uh, my my heritage. I'm not entirely well lit right now, but I guess that's suiting because I feel like I I feel like I just came out of like a really dark. <laughs> timeline I don't know uh, okay I guess I have to share with you this part because it is part of the writing process but I wasn't necessarily about to cry but I was about to be like severely upset because for some reason my files got mixed up and I thought that I lost like several free writes that I had done over the course of the past few days, couple of weeks, I was about to be really upset. And it's not the same as losing like really polished chapters and having no record of them whatsoever, but it's still a lot of work that I would have missed out on if I hadn't placed it. Luckily, I found the files. They were just named something really weird. If anything, this is really a lesson on a, being really organized as a writer, like a lot of writers claim I'm not tech savvy or I'm not like very organized, but no, you have to be super organized to avoid situations like this where you could have a person crying because of how much work that they could have lost out on and B, you just have to know how to back up all of your work, whether that's literally just putting it in a Word doc and emailing it to yourself or using Google Docs, but you should have another copy of your entire piece of work and all the elements that go into that. So luckily, I didn't lose anything, not that I'm aware of, um, but yeah, I, I have noticed that I've been getting really disorganized with all of my files lately and it's taking me longer to write things because I can't find some of the research that I've done before and it's just everywhere. This is basically the world telling me right now, take some time to organize all this stuff on my laptop and back it up because something bad could happen if I don't and a lot of hard work could go down the drain if I'm not careful, if I'm not organized enough. So you know those days where you're like, I really could just curl up in bed and stay there for hours and not do anything for the rest of the day. Today is one of those days for me where I'm just like, why do I have to dress nice? I just want to put on my sweatshirt. I just want to like go underneath my covers and sleep. I'm, I don't know, I think I'm just tired. I'm, I might be a little bit burnt out from like pushing myself, but it's okay. I just want to say that, that it's okay. Every creative person I know goes through this, where some days it's just harder to get things down on paper, harder to create stuff. It's not as easy as some people would like to think. Um, sometimes it's kind of painful to like actually get some ideas down on paper. And then there's also days that a creative person has where they're just blocked. I think actually one of the best things to do is to do everything except your craft and to just take a break. But for me, today is not one of those days. I just, I think I'm just feeling tired and sleepy and cold um, and I just want to curl up in bed. But I think I can push through that today. So today, I'm actually pretty amped because I'm coming up on finalizing, not finalizing, but just fine-tuning my outline a little bit better. I definitely have a better direction and I just need to polish it after this point, but I've been a little bit stuck with the act two of my novel just because everything else seems to make sense to me. I know how it should begin, like how to kick off the action and how to resolve the action, but everything in between that is still a little bit blurry for me. It's because it's my novel is at this weird point where it's like, Okay, I have all the pieces, but how do I get my character to 
make valuable mistakes along the way that are going to lead them to the final resolution. Um, but I should say that creating problems for your characters is not just necessarily to make your character's life in general just miserable. And as a writer, like, sure, yeah, that's, that's the key aspect of it. But uh, there's always a purpose to that. You want to create a problem for your character, and so when they overcome that issue, or if they fail from it, they're coming out of that problem with either a tool or a lesson that's going to help them with their overarching um, problem that they have. So if I'm thinking about problems that I'm making for my characters, I first and foremost need to think about the overarching theme that I want them to learn, how I want them to transform at the end. So knowing that about your character is going to be really helpful in thinking about all these obstacles that you need to set up for them in the very beginning. <laughs> see, this is why, okay, I don't know if you can see this, but this is why writing secretly takes long or planning out a novel secretly takes long is because you have all these questions about things that you just don't know about. For example, I'm looking up Beach House Maintenance 101. Do I own a beach house? No. Do I plan to live in a beach house? I don't know. I don't know what happens in the future for me, but I need to know how to care for a beach house or a beach-like place because my novel takes place on the coastline and it takes place at a hostel. But yeah, this the weirdest things that I need to know about generally interrupt the my outline, but it's all important stuff. I'm reading The Martian. I usually don't read science fiction books, like, at all. It's not in my realm of writing, and it doesn't necessarily initially attract me to it, but I've been trying to read more diversely, and actually reading The Martian has helped me think about things in different ways, and that's always very helpful when I'm trying to write something. Yeah, this isn't a book I would naturally gravitate towards because A, I'm scared of space, and B, I'm scared of just the oblivion and emptiness of space and being alone. So one could say that The Martian is the perfect book for me. I was never, I was never really a science person growing up. Like I appreciate science and I'm always really interested in the newest innovations of it, but my head doesn't naturally isn't naturally wired to understand scientific terms. It, it takes me a while to, to get them. It's interesting reading this book because I'm understanding what's going on. Like I, like, the plot makes sense to me at least and to understand the plot in this book you kind of have to understand the science of it. So I appreciate how the author wrote this. Unfortunately I can't make notes in this because this is my friend's. I'm, I'm just gonna read today and make mental notes in my head. Thank you.
break because <laughs> I want to keep reading the book. Like I know I just said like right before this that I didn't want to do my writing routine, but I just want to keep reading it because it was like they're about to launch into the climax of the book and I'm like, what's gonna happen? But before I actually went further, otherwise I think another hour or at least half hour would be gone before I finished it. So I'm trying to soothe my nerves with eating chocolate as one does and get Mark Watney out of my head and my characters into my head. Oh, those chocolate's good. This chocolate's like saving me right now. Anyways, we're gonna free write. Um, and by free write, I think I'm actually going to write a scene that I had planned earlier. I'm going to have to do this at one point where it'll just be a period of time, like maybe over the course of a month or weeks, I don't know, where I'm just free writing and only free writing just to get everything on the page. So I might as well do that work right now while I'm in the midst of outlining. I didn't necessarily have anything planned for this free write. I don't know what the scene's going to look like. It's basically going to be a flashback memory of Beatrice and I kind of just left that open. So today is actually a true free write but it's in the novel. Okay, as one does, let's get started. 